I know we are ending the day and this is the last session of the day. I hope we are not going to bore you and we'll try to engage you. Thank you for joining us, guys. All right. So, um, I'm so sorry. All right. So, um, we are from Srijan. I just wanted to share this news, first of all. Um, last week, uh, there was a press release that Material Plus Company has acquired Srijan. So we are actually now Srijan, a Material Plus Company. I'm not sure if you're already aware of it, but I thought um, uh, I should share this good news with you. So yeah, I mean, this uh, collaboration with Material Plus, we are quite positive about it, and I hope things will work you know, the way we want it. Um, if you want more details, maybe you can just browse shrijan.net and you will get more details about it, how this collaboration happened and uh, what is the strategy behind it and all the stuff, you will get to know more about it from there. All right, so this is the introduction here. I'm Reena Tripathi. Uh, I'm based in London. I'm playing the role of an account manager and the delivery director based on the projects. Actually, we have to switch the roles and uh, yeah, so it's been seven years with Srijan now, and uh, yeah, things are going pretty well here. Sid, Arunima, maybe you can just introduce yourself. Hi, everyone. I'm, I'm Siddharth Goswami. I'm the delivery manager. Um, I have been with Srijan for almost close to seven plus years, uh, leading uh, a delivery management role uh, on, in sustainable domain currently, handling sustainable projects and working with the two of my colleagues in the same project. Thanks, Sid. Hi, everyone. I'm Aronima. Um, I'm a senior product manager with Srijan, been with Srijan for four years, um, and uh, I've worked across diverse domains, but primarily very passionate about uh, learning, uh, sustainability, and uh, inclusion. Thank you. All right. So. Um, yeah, uh, today's topic is uh, delivering an enterprise application on the carbon emission side, how we measure the carbon footprint, and what are the abatement we are doing around it. So the pathways around it, how we can reduce the carbon emission. So this is all about the, uh, the IT solution which we are building for one of our key customer here. Uh, the agenda for today's discussion would be about net zero carbon emission. We are going to detail you about what exactly it is, the terminology, you know, we'll explain that, and also what is the road path around it. With regards to the project, we'll explain what is the context, what is the solution, the process workflow we are following, what is the architecture, how Drip Drupal is introduced here. And then the application demo, demo. This is not the real application demo, but yes, we would be you know, demonstrating the prototype which we have built. And then the feedback and the question answers. All right, so we'll start with this. I know everybody is talking about rising global average temperature. We know that this is the hot topic and everybody's experiencing it around the globe. As you see the picture here on the left-hand side, I mean, this is quite interesting and quite alarming as well. If you see here on the right side, you see the graph, how this is jumping with respect to the rise in the temperature from 1960 or 1980 onwards to uh, 2019. You see that there is an increase of 0.18 degrees centigrade temperature rise. But if you see on the left side, 1850, I think, till 1940, there was an increase of 0 0.80. This is really alarming. 0 0.80 was the period, you know, from 1950 to 1940, this is the increase. But now, every decade, we are increasing just double. What are we doing about it? What are the countries doing about it? What are the companies, organization, industries doing about it? Now here it is, road to net zero carbon emission. So first of all, let's understand 
what is net zero carbon emission. I hope you all have heard about greenhouse gases, right? So greenhouse gas emission, which is taking place these days because of human activities, it's rising. So when do we say that we will reach net zero carbon emission? This is when the greenhouse gases, which is being emitted through the human activities, when we come to the zero, uh, zero of it, when the absorption is equal in the equal amount, that time we say that it is going to be net zero emission. But how do we achieve that? And what do we exactly mean by human activities? There are fossil fuels, right? We are just doing uh, cutting down the trees. This is all what happening around the globe. Now, what are the countries? What are the industries? All the countries doing about it. So this is the roadmap which you can see here. Starting from 2009, there are some scientists. They have published the paper that this, you know, increase of the global warming is the impact of CO2 emission in the greenhouse gases, which is the combination of multiple gases in the greenhouse. 2013, again, there was a report issued that this eventual rise is because of CO2. I mean, in all the reports you will see here, then considering these facts, you know, in uh, Paris Agreement 2015, what happened? 196 countries, sorry, 196 countries, you know, participated in the Paris Agreement and they talked about this global warming and there everybody took the pledge that we are not going 1.5 degrees centigrade global average. We are not going beyond that. And for that, we have to come up with some sort of options, the strategy, and everybody started working towards that. Again, in 2018, there was a report, again, which concludes the same thing, that we have to come up with a net zero, at least by 2050. That was the step which was taken. 2021, there was a COP26 glass blow, which happened again. I mean, where, you know, they have reviewed what was, you know, laid, down, uh, laid out in the Paris Agreement, where they talked about that this is what we have to do, and they have reviewed, the, uh, reviewed you know, where we stand right now with respect to this. All the countries, they have presented, uh, you know, the options, the um, uh, solutions from their side to this COP26, and uh, from there, the strategy was laid that by 2013, we have to reduce to 25% at least. And by 2050, we have to really reach, uh, <coughs> we have to really reach net zero carbon emission. This means that we have to really work a lot around it. And around this, we have started building a solution which we are going to present to you, uh, you know, in terms of the IT, what we are doing. And we, <coughs> and we can directly relate it to it. This is what we are going to show. Sorry, my. Um, Thanks, Reena. Can I just have that? Yeah. Thank you. So, Reena introduced the concept of net zero to you guys. Um, also explained what the world is doing about it. Uh, before I go to the next slide, um, I just want to ask a question to you guys. Like, I know it's a small audience, but. Have you guys just give, just spend like the next 10 seconds thinking about what your carbon footprint was just to get here today? Or maybe what is the carbon footprint of this DrupalCon that's happening right now? That's the question that is answered by the solution that we built. Um, just the vision of the client here is to be able to build a client service platform. Why I say client service is because it's not being consumed by the um, by our client, but it's actually for clients, for their clients, uh, where they would help industry sectors, organizations transform and get to net zero. And we're going to see how that's going to happen, right? Um, there were two desired outcomes, goals, of course, uh, one on the business side, one on the user side. Uh, the business side, obviously, is to be able to help those clients catalyze their decarbonization strategies, right? So uh, when we talk about decarbonization, and my question earlier, right, what is the carbon footprint, let's say, of this DrupalCon that's happening right now, right? There needs to be a way to measure it, and then a way to figure out 
how that carbon footprint can be reduced, right? What are the alternative technologies that can be used to do that, right? That's the decarbonization strategy building part of it, right? And does it, does it, is it only limited to a certain um, um, event, an activity? So that decarbonization extends beyond uh, an activity or um, just a process, right? It extends to products like manufacturing, industry products. It uh, extends to processes happening within, uh, within a system, right? It also extends to activity, right? Let's say being able to decarbonize the, um, you know, all the uh, transport within a city, right? So that's the business. That was one of the business goals uh, to be able to catalyze their uh, decarbonization strategies for their client, and also being able to realign and reallocate capital into sustainability transformation. Why? Because when you are adopting alternative technologies, there's a cost associated with it. So being able to define what that realignment should be, what is that additional uh, cost that's uh, going to be incurred, is what was the second business goal that we were tackling. When I say user as the uh, second set of our, uh, you know, of our consumers of this tool, uh, I'm referring specifically to those modelers who are who are working on these projects, who are working on these strategies. So for them, the target was to be able to reduce the cost and effort uh, of setup for multiple clients, being able to, you know, look at um, and and Sir is going to later on talk about um, the architecture. So I'm not going to dwell very deeply on this, but how can that multiple uh, client setup be done? And then uh, being able to generate and analyze the models for the different products, for different assets, for different processes. So that's like a summary of what we did. Um, how we did it is, so it's, this is basically a decarbonization strategy is like a four-step approach, right? You have to first measure what, uh, first identify where are those areas where we are, where uh, the client might be exposed to a climate risk. Right, um, with all the floods and the droughts and uh, you know all the landslides that are happening, there's there's an element of climate risk that has come up into everything, into assets, into real estate. So being able to identify where they are exposed to such a climate risk, uh, this could be uh, done through you know which location they are placed at, what is their supply chain looking like, what is their bill of materials looking like and other support processes. The second step, once this identification has been made, is to analyze the current uh, baselines. What is the current emission, like we spoke of? And this combines the processes along with uh, the technology data. So their current emission data sets, as well as the technology data, a combination of that is used to analyze the current baseline emission, and then go to exploring alternative pathways, exploring other opportunities, which again, we use a lot of technology data to do that. Um, and there's, there's more coming up in the slides on the Pathways Explorer. And then finally, being able to identify what's the cost of abatement, right? What is the cost that's going to go in to be able to find, uh, to be able to pivot to this decarbonization strategy? We've got a quick demo of, um, oh, sorry, that's going to come later. But yeah, we're going to talk more about each of these steps in detail now, which Sid is going to do. And then towards the end, we'll see a quick demo of how that's going to look in real life. Yeah. Thank you, Thank you Arunima. All right. So in order to understand the application better, we need to understand the underlying concept behind it. And to be able to do that, we'll be taking, the, uh, taking one of the examples and we'll drive through those. What are the different steps? The first step itself is identifying the product structure. Uh, a product, the end product, is like it's made up of different components, parts, um, assemblies, and raw materials. Um, and why it is important to do, or do this is because we are following a bottom-up approach. We are trying to identify the emissions at the bottom layer and then take it to the top level. Uh, and to present that, pre present this in a may, in a way, um, there are two ways of doing that. One is your uh, single level of presentation where you have an end product and just associating with the raw material, but that won't help you much. Uh, reason being, you won't be able to, it's not a holistic view. Uh, also, it will not give you uh, the ability or the flexibility to play with the different alternatives. That's why the multiple hierarchy has been chosen, where you, broke down, you break down uh, the end product uh, into different components and then different components into different raw materials. Let's see this with the help of an example. Sorry. 
So the first example where we have the end product and then we have the raw materials. The other one is a more uh, like a deeper level of hierarchy where you have end products, then you have assemblies, components, and raw material. For simplicity's sake, we are going to take talk, talk only about the two levels right now, uh, which is your end product, components, and raw materials. The second step is understanding the scope. You need to understand your carbon footprint to be why. Uh, to be able to do that, to understand your carbon footprint, you should be able to identify what are the different level of emissions which are going into it. Um, according to GSD protocol standards, globally we are using three scopes. Uh, scope one, scope two, scope three, we're gonna talk about that. Um, at a broader level, they have been categorized into direct emissions and indirect emissions. The direct emissions are the emissions that you're generating directly from your plants. The indirect emissions are broadly classified into two scopes, which are scope two and scope three. The scope two are your, um, for example, let's say, uh, to be able to explain this in terms of an example, uh, your any kind of uh, components or any kind of parts that you are outsourcing it to any other vendor or utility company that is producing at an offshore site that becomes your indirect emissions. Then you have the other scope, which is scope three, uh, which is related to your emissions generating out of your value chain. Um, materials and logistics being the part of it. How does it transform into the example that we were taking? Uh, we already have identified the, the components and raw material already. What we have brought into the picture is the logistic part of it. So let's say your raw material is coming from, you are getting it from different uh, locations. Uh, through land, air, and water, and you're using rail frights and your air frights and ocean frights. So these are your scope three, which is your logistic part. Scope one, you are producing any of you, any of the processes that you're doing on your current plant, um, whether it is related to factory heating or your final assembly. Uh, you're using energies, you are consuming energies on your on-site locations. So all those becomes part of your scope one. And if you are outsourcing anything uh, to, uh, or you're producing any component or, or any part at an offshore location, that becomes scope three, scope two. Once you have identified product structure, you have associated, you have identified scope, scopes associated or the different type of emissions. What we need to do is what are the current level? We need to identify what are the current level of emissions in your current manufacturing process. Why it is needed, we should be able to visualize the areas of abatement and this will help us in prioritizing the, the abatement options that we would have. Again, let's see this with an example. Uh, I, I've specially highlighted one of the areas which is handlebar, uh, which, is, uh, which is kind of a company which is using uh, titanium and carbon fiber. Uh, each of these raw material has an emission intensity associated with it. You already know how much of kg or a net wave we are using to it. So you will be able to identify what is the emission generated in your manufacturing process. Once you identify the emissions at the raw material level, you will be able to identify at the component level. And again, once you do that for the entire value chain or the entire scope that you have, you will be able to identify for a per unit of product. Now we have the current, current emissions. What we need to do is explore what are the abatement options available to us. Uh, and the abatement option are generally the abatement potential in terms of the carbon emission and the carbon cost. So now we were using titanium, which was as per our current manufacturing process. We can replace it with a greener technology. A greener technology titanium has been replaced as you can see in the terms of handlebar. So we know that uh, all of the all of these uh, replacement is actually abating the potential in terms of carbon emissions, but what is the cost associated with it? We see that, uh, and this is just an example. The locations I've added is only an example; it's not a real life scenario. Uh, green titanium, which we are procuring from USA, maybe uh, it's 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 actually emitting or abating the uh, emissions, but it is it actually costlier or it's actually. Uh, expensive as compared to the previous raw material. But if I procure it from a different location, Taiwan, then probably I will be able to meet the abatement potential goals as well as my cost goals. 
at a top technology level if i have if we have to speak about we are using the headless approach where we are using at the back end drupal and in the front end we are using react application um, the application this is an mvp version of the entire entire set uh, or the entire application that we have built so far uh, we, it is hosted on aws cloud uh, all the assets that goes into uh, uh, the application they are hosted on Amazon S3 buckets, and at the at the back end, we are using relational database to store time series data to uh, to get the data out of each of the alternatives. With this, I think, which further, without further ado, I'll act. We'll take you to the demos part of it. Okay, so what we have put here is a um, is a very brief demo of the process of how the application actually functions. Uh, just a disclaimer upfront: uh, all the content here is placeholder kind of like it's not real, um, does not come from any client or any technology data which is being pulled from any uh, PI, um, any IP uh, protected information. So what we have first, uh, like uh, for all, as the basis of all the calculation that we need, we need the technology data, right? So uh, we have initially we load all the technology data, which includes things like uh, what Sid spoke, the capex, the opex, what is the current emission uh, of this particular technology, and we, when we dive deeper into any technology. Uh, we are able to see in detail what is the different, uh, what is the emission data year on year for a certain process of that um, technology as well as um, a, a certain emission type and the location from where uh, that technology is being sourced. This is the, this, this forms like the basic uh, database basis which all the baselines or all the uh, abatements are calculated. Then on the other side, we have the product data. The product data is where we are loading you know, um, uh, all our products. So for, in, for example, here we, here we have taken for an example uh, an automotive parts uh, manufacturer. So if let's say somebody, uh, so, so a user here can go in, add their product details, like what are all the different components, what is the, uh, what is the net weight of that component uh, in this particular product, what is the quantity, what is the, uh, what is the material type, and this material type is key because this is what ties back to the technology data for this. So you might have different types of manufacturing processes for copper with different emission uh, intensities for each of these. And then what is the source of this particular component, where is this being sourced from? Once all this data is loaded for a product, they can use the ba uh, they can view the baseline emission of this product. So here we see that you know it, this is broken down. So the information that was uploaded into the product, along with the uh, club together with the technology data that we have uploaded uh, previously, we club that together to extract what is the material by material emission uh, intensity. So you can see that what is per kg of material the emission uh, charted, and you can also see which is, so here you can actually deduce which is, so for, for the product owner, they can deduce which is the material that's um, contributing the most to their carbon emission in this product. Uh, they can also switch to a component view if they want to see you know, which is the component that's the maximum contributor. Once this is done, which is your baseline emission, they can view it. Now they want to explore alternative pathways to see how they can reduce. So what is the switches? The switches that uh, Sid was talking of earlier, right? How can I switch? So can I switch, let's say, my transport from, uh, you know, can I switch it to an electric vehicle? So as I play around with, like, let's say, the permutation and combination of technologies over here, I can see my MAC curve, which is my uh, abatement, uh, which shows my abatement cost and abatement potential changing dynamically. This allows the user to sort of, um, you know, figure out which is the pathway that they want to uh, pick up for their eventual decarbonization strategy. So I can build out like multiple pathways for each uh, for each uh, product. And I can, you know, I can set goals. And this is typically how we do, right? Like we set goals saying, okay, you know, 2035, this is my pathway. Uh, let's say this is my business as usual, my BAU pathway, which is like the default pathway that we see. So 
this is a, this allows the uh, like the organization to make decisions and this can be extended from products it can be extended to processes it can be extended to assets real estate assets it can also be extended to um, uh, activities at a regional or a global uh, level and all of this using the power of Drupal's CMS in the back end so yeah I think with that I think we've run out of time and we throw it open for any questions you guys have So any questions? Yes. So the data for the uh, technologies, right? This is right. That uh, the year-on-year -year data, the different, uh, um, you know, the different emission intensities and the cost that's uh, sourced uh, from a, uh, from multiple research institutes. Uh, most of it is purchased data. And that's why we've not really shown real data over here. It's all placeholder. But uh, most of it is purchased from real, um, research institutes. A lot of it is also published uh, data. Uh, so some of the commonly used materials, uh, uh, emission and uh, cost data, like the CapEx, OpEx, um, is actually published and available um, uh, in an open domain, um, as an open, um, yeah, in the public domain. Yes, 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 we do. We do that. So based on what uh, you know, what we are leveraging this tool for, is it for a product? Is it for a activity? Because when we say activity, so let's say the kind of data we need is very different, right? So if you're looking at, let's say, activities at a regional level, like being able to decarbonize, let's say, the public transport within a city, right? Or being able to uh, decarbonize, let's say, uh, waste management within a country. So the kind of data, technology data you need is very different from, let's say, uh, decarbonizing something like a product uh, manufacturing. So depending on where we're applying this, uh, we, s you know, we work out what kind of data is required in the back end. Any other questions? Okay, cool. Hope you guys were able to take. Yes, yes. So um, one of these tools is live. And uh, just to put it in, a v you know, to quantify it in numbers, uh, the deployments of that tool have so far uh, helped reduce around three trillion, um, you know, three trillion uh, gigajoules of carbon emission within a certain region for a certain client. Yeah. So that's been. For automotive. Based on that, uh, what we are doing, we are also deploying it to other industries as well. So other one is the next one which we have picked is retail, uh, sorry, uh, what is the real estate industry. Yeah, so that is under process now. I hope we will be releasing it in another two or three months. But the concept will remain the same, is just that the modules and the components based on the industry will get changed. The levers will get changed based on that. Okay, cool. Uh, if you guys have any other questions, we're around, you can connect with us. Thank you.